For me, like a, a good test of any drill is how much you can actually use it. You could still use it on the course. All right, mate, so let's talk about uh, starting the backswing, right? So without a doubt, it's probably one of the most common questions that I get asked as a teacher, and then people do tend to spend time on YouTube searching, is for the fact that there's a lot of confusion around what starts the backswing. Is it a shift of pressure? Is it the movement of the club head? Is it a set of the wrists? Is it as a pull of the arms? And we were just talking about before is that when it comes to golf, it's still like an athletic dynamic motion, right? And even though the ball is played from a stationary position, at the end of the day, the target's out there. And you'll never see a professional golfer step up to the ball like this and be completely motionless and then if you were to be able to scan their brain, a pro golf would never go, we need to move this and that and that and that. It's a lot more reactive towards the target, right? So when we're talking about the backswing motion, and you were just describing before a drill that you're working on with the player was to actually lift the, the trail heel up here, uh, start with the club a little bit in front and then feel like you kind of slam that down a little bit just to initiate that takeaway. So I want you to talk a little bit more about that. And if I set up to the ball and I was to reenact what I see the general amateur golfer do, I'm here and then I make a very forced mechanical stiff position, what would you tell me to do? Absolutely, I see so much of this. And I get asked questions that I'm struggling to comprehend. I'm getting asked, okay, is it my right knee that moves first or is it my, the front toe lace on my left foot and I'm, I'm not thinking that <laughs> that much in depth. I feel underqualified when I'm getting asked these questions and I, I'm not thinking this way. Yeah. So I like this feeling because as you start to stamp that right foot down, everything starts to happen and there's really not much thought going on at all. So as I, I start there with the right, uh, right foot up, mm -hmm. as it stamps down, obviously it takes the, the right hip, yeah. takes it back behind. Yeah. A lot of people when trying to be too careful with a backswing turns into they yeah. keep everything still. The more stationary pieces, the more consistent, the more stationary pieces, the more accurate, mm. really the more slow. Correct. Um, so okay. a lot of people wanting more speed, wanting more control, think those two have to work independently. As this goes up, as it starts to go backwards, we start to get some hip turn. Mm. As we start to get some hip turn, this hip gets a little bit higher and then we get some of the tilts that we're actually looking for as well. Yeah, I would, um, we're gonna digress a little bit more on that, exactly what you said there, which you, you put really well, is just the whole purpose of this is to pretty much initiate a degree of body turn and rotation, which is going to facilitate that movement of the arms and the club to the top of the swing. Because if we were looking at one checkpoint in the golf swing of the average amateur golfer, who really gets themselves into a position where they've got to do a lot of work to even strike a reasonable shot, it would be the old no turn, armsy, breakdown of structure, lead arm cups. Then they think that they need to rotate really hard through the ball. And then from there, well, it doesn't take Einstein to figure out it's going to be tough work, it's right? It's going to be. going to be a struggle. <laughs> Probably the best swing you've seen today. So when we set up to this one here and we're talking about this kind of shift of pressure, it, there's so many different drills like this that are very, very similar. Um, we would say like the step drill would obviously be one as well. So let's say we're setting up to it. We kind of put the right foot a little bit further in for the right hander, start with the club in front, step back, and that facilitates that. But what I really like about this one here where we lift the trail heel up a little bit, slam that down, and then turn, is it doesn't really take that coordination element. Now, for this one here, would you say this is a good drill for players of all levels or? I like watching beginner golfers do this. Yeah. Um, I actually tried it myself left-handed. Okay. I try everything left-handed just to try and remember how difficult it is because the first time I tried to get someone to do this and they're trying to remember which is their right foot, which is their left, it was, it was fun to watch. So I Give recommend it, it for, <laughs> <laughs> for all levels of golfers, but just really starting very, very slow. So yeah. if I was to do it left-handed, I'll be starting there and, okay, right foot, left foot. Okay. And so all levels, but starting really slow. Yeah. Actually, um, where did I see this first? Lynn Blake. Okay. Uh, McDonald golf exercises. Just a lot of these kind of motion-based movements for yep. beginner golfers is fantastic. Mm. Because, like you say, clouded with so many thoughts, 
then someone says, okay, you don't want to sway too much off the board. Oh, yeah. You can see there's 17 different things going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. What I really like about this is, as you do it for a beginner golfer, it takes care of, okay, get a bit of motion, you get a bit of rhythm, kind of clears up the idea of too much slide on your, on your backswing, too much sway on your backswing. Covers a lot of areas without having to think too much. So I really like it for beginner golfers, mm -hmm. just to get a feeling of athleticism mm -hmm. um, but then as you go into better golfers as well it's great so okay cool so uh, what I'm gonna do is I want you to jump over here for me you're gonna kind of guide me through this right so let's pretend that I'm a uh, beginner golfer my swing from the setup position looks like this and I'm struggling to make contact with the ball. But you we kept see. Your head down, yeah, so. exactly that's all that counts uh, did not keep a straight left arm on that one <laughs> that's for sure must be the problem so guide me through pretending that i'm a player who does this or what you'd instruct them to do do i start with my hands out in front of me yeah, or forward hands or? Uh, right in front of you yep let's go let's right let's goes go up. up yep and then so go. that starts the movement absolutely so okay the step is step is initiate the movement. okay so pushing yep. and then like you said the thing about shifting your pressure in the golf swing which is a transfer of energy of my body and my mass into the ground that then helps get that turn in is what that then does as I shift that down the ground is then pushing back up and I can feel that, that extension into your straight away exactly. yeah. straight away yeah. and that is completely removed from what we see a lot of players doing of keeping this right knee flexed and shifting off the ball and this is very static but by simply just getting into a position lifting that up feeling that plant and then Absolutely. rotate almost feels like that's what should happen yeah then you said for different levels of golfers so beginners just the idea of just rate weight transfer but in terms of better golfers doing this get some extension into your backswing and also some speed into your backswing it's great for speed because you're getting some inertia you're getting some some movement you're getting more hip turn so it's a great move for adding in some speed as well as just well to, to be honest right um when I did some videos with Steve Furlonger over yep. in the UK recently, and we were kind of working on my driver club head speed, we did a, a real big analysis of my movement pattern. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the old camp of, I was learned and taught to uh, keep my right knee flex and kind of move off the ball a bit. So for me, this is a very foreign feeling. Yep. And even when I'm trying to increase my speed, my driver speed when I was playing was like 113 on average, okay. right? And now I'm up to 129 when I try and rip it purely for the combination of when we were working with Steve, of really starting this backswing by slamming that down as hard as I can. Yeah. And even in my normal driver swing, which doesn't look that great, but it tends to work, is that I will even, before I take the golf club away, push this down as hard as I can yeah. so I can get that extension. Yeah. For me, like a, a good test of any drill is how much you can actually use it, you could still use it on the course. Yeah. And standing there, if I want to hit one a bit harder too, um, starting there with a little, the heel just being up a tiny bit, is a good trigger for, okay, I'm here. And there's the start of my backswing is great. So if I want to give a driver a little, a little bit extra, you can do the exact same thing. Yeah. But no one would even know you're doing it. So you can stand there like this. I've done the same movement that I was describing in that drill yeah. in an actual swing. Yeah. It's so much better. I like, step drills these kind of things but you're trying to work out okay ball position needs to be exactly here but when i do a step drill my left foot's gone here yeah yeah gets a little coordination part so it's great tough. for the first step but yeah being able to use this as, a, as an all like, all in one is, yeah. is good. i'm going to start off with a bit of a drill sequence that the players at home can use so we're going to start off with our hands in front then i would say lift the right foot up or the back of the right heel up for the right hander feel like you slam and that and then encourages wait for that slam to get the feeling of that rotation so hands in front lift the trail heel up slam then i feel the extension through my body then why don't we chuck the club in the hands here mate and we're going to do the same thing so good golf posture right heel up yep. how does that look yep you've got some extension in your trail leg which is good the the previous cardinal sin. Oh yeah. There we go. Got some yeah. Extension. Perfect. Got some hip I'm gonna do that once more. Fantastic. Are you trying to explain to me what started your backswing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know how we were describing before, it just tends to feel like it happens yep. without trying to uh, focus on too many mechanical pieces. Well, essentially, it was a blackout section through here mentally, and that means that when I'm on the golf course and I'm standing up and I've got a shot that I might be a bit nervous about, well, essentially I could pull this off without getting too stuck in my head, and that's a yep. fantastic outcome, right? So the first couple of shots here, um, if a player's doing this, we would kind of just rehearse it, right? So right heel up, slam it, and then feel it. 
And would you do a slow swing or a full swing to start off with? I would start with slow. When you do this, you'll pretty much get to around half swing yeah. or so. But really, every time you're doing that drill swing, focus on what you're actually feeling. Yeah, you can okay. do the drill a hundred times. If you didn't really take away any personal feeling, it's kind of wasted. Correct. So. So I like to do that and then just gradually get the trail hill lower and lower to the ground so it's less and less of an exaggerated movement but still try and get that same feeling in the heel. Okay, I'm gonna chip one down there. You know what, even on like on a short shot, I know my arms moved into a far bigger position than probably what I would have assumed them. And when we film swings and you show it to your students, they always go, I can't, I can't so believe the club went that big. And that's because as soon as we turn our body, my arms in space, right? They haven't moved relative to my chest, but look how far back they are. Yep. So really the golf swing and the back swing is about creating as big an upper body turn as you can with a little bit of arm movement and wrist hinge that makes it very easy to sequence, whereas most players just do the old, pull the arms around the body and don't use the body. So now we're like in, you go. More from that too is that, because we described a little bit of the tilts that you'll get, when players ask me, okay, how do I make my swing a little bit shorter? If they're in the old pattern of sideways movement, very much thinking of do this, do this, do this. As they're moving this way, everything gets very flat. As a result, it's very easy to be very long. Yeah. As this hip is aggressively going backwards, yeah. there'll be a straighten here, this knee will already be higher than this knee. As you start to do that, you've got enough tilt here that the swing will automatically start to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more in sync, without really, again, thinking of stop when you get to this point in the swing. Okay, great. So I'm gonna do a couple more rehearsals and then I'll show one down there. Up, slam and feel. So I could even use that in my own golf game. Let's see how we go for a full shot here. So I've got the feeling. Now I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit. You know what, mate? Like, impact there felt so good. Ball first, ground second contact. Awesome stuff. Cheers.